Hi, everybody. So today I'm going to talk about uh, chat PDF again. Um, in a previous video, I uh, used this program, this interface with uh, chat GPT, which was called chat PDF, which is about uploading a PDF um, to a website or to an interface with chat GPT, which allows you to um, then question and interact with a specific document. And uh, somebody replied to me and said, have you tried Humata, which is a, um, a, another, um, which is another um, uh, PDF chatting uh, interface. So I thought I would try to compare the two uh, to see which one was better or if, if one is better than the other or if they're the same. Um, and the kind of use, uh, the uses of it, and whether it's you know whether I I like it or think that it's useful. Okay, so in in the past, I um, in the previous video, I I chatted with uh, this document uh, called Postmodernism or the Logic of Late Capital. And so today, I thought I'd, I'd pick another kind of uh, 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 oldie but goodie a document called The End of History by Francis Fukuyama, an old an old debate from the eighties at nineteen eighty nine, I think. Um, about whether um, Western democracies or liberal democracies were the end of history. Okay, so the 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 subject's not so important, but but I think it was it's uh, it's a useful thing to pick because it's something that was an old debate and GPT three or four or three point five whatever four I guess now uh, would have scraped that uh, that would have been part of the data set uh, and there would be lots written in the um, uh, in the context of political theory or political science and um, and humanities in general. Um, okay, so what you have here is uh, on the left here is uh, I've loaded up the PDF. I've uploaded the PDF called End of History to Chat PDF, which is uh, chatpdf.com. That's where that's located. Uh, and then on the right, I've loaded up the same document, uh, which is a you know a short article, but very you know well known article. Um, uh, to Humata, which is another uh, PDF that you upload to chat PDF, and you use this interface to directly interact just with that article, right? So we have two different products, which are very similar. Um, and I'll show you the pricing for it. Here for, for uh, chat PDF, it's free. Basically, you can upload up to 120 pages, but you can only upload three PDFs per day. And you can only ask 50 questions. With, with Humata over here on the right, it's also free. Uh, it lets you upload less pages, 60 pages instead of 100, 120 pages. Uh, but uh, it's not limited to 50 questions, it's unlimited questions. So I guess it's um, they're weighted a little bit differently. But um, but nonetheless, they're, they're very similar in that sense. So what did I ask? The first thing I asked when I uploaded on the left to chat PDF, I, uh, I asked the question, what is the larger process that Fukuyama argues is at work in world history, right? And then it responds, Fukuyama argues that the larger process at work in world history is the end of history as such, which means that the end point of mankind's ideological evolution and the universalization of Western liberal democracy as the final form of human government. He believes that this is not just the end of the Cold War, or a particular period of post-war history, but a fundamental change in world history, which I think is true. That's that's an accurate, I think, summary of uh, its main argument. So I asked the same question to Imata, and it says something very similar, right? It's, it actually begins uh, with almost the exact same sentence. Fukuyama argues that the larger process of work in world history is the evolution uh, of human consciousness. That, that changed a bit. So it shows, again, I think, as we know, anyone who's been using ChatGPT, it always answers a bit differently, uh, sometimes with the same kind of phrasing, but maybe blended a bit differently. Um, he suggests that the end of the Cold War and the collapse of communism marked the end of this process with liberal democracy and capitalism emerging uh, as the final form of human government and economic organization. So it's a little bit different in the sense that it, I think it uses the word communism, uh, which um, uh, the first uh, review doesn't, Chad PDF doesn't do that. Um, 
And then the second question here, I, 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 um, I ask is, why does he use the term end of history and how can history end? Certainly he's making a metaphoric statement, yes? And so I'm, as you can see here, I'm already trying to begin to test it. I'm trying to um, push it in a sense, right? I'm, I'm not trying to let it off the hook, right? I'm trying to ask it tough questions. And I think it does a good job of responding to my, you know, my earnest questions. It says, yes, Fukuyama is making a metaphorical statement when he uses the term end of history. He argues that history in the sense of a coherent and directional narrative of human events has come to an end because there's no longer any viable alternative to liberal, to liberal democracy as a form of government. And then on the right here, I say, uh, I ask the same question, why does he use the term end of history and how can end the same thing, right? So he says, yes, uh, Humanta says, yes, Fukuyama is making a metaphorical statement. So it's the same beginning uh, when, he, when he uses the term end of history. He argues that the end of history does not mean that the end of events uh, or the end of time, but rather the end of the evolution of human consciousness and the development of ideologies. That's a little bit different than here. It, you know, just even this notion of evolution of human consciousness is quite different than the, this question on the left, th this answer on the left, which focuses more on this notion of democracy and uh, government. Um, so there are some slight differences. Is that the difference because of the interface of chat PDF versus Humata? I don't know. It could just be chat PDF, sorry, chat GPT, um, if you will, blending different responses, right? That's that's its, uh, if it, that's its tendency to do that, always to, to have a little bit different uh, answers. What is also, I think, useful in the Humata, which is, uh, which is not present in chat PDF, is it tells you the pages from which it is citing in a sense it's not it's not telling exactly what passages but it's saying i'm getting these ideas so it's not saying i'm quoting these things but i'm getting this idea that i have blended for you from page 1 to 12 13 15 right and then on the on the right hand side i'm sorry it's all shrunk but if you if you go to the website and try it for yourself you'll see that it's highlighted in yellow so um, that's i think quite useful you know, in terms of study or studium, in terms of undergraduate or graduate research or um, instructor or professor research, you know, academic scholarly research, um, having the numbers uh, cited, the page numbers cited with uh, the passages, um, you know, highlighted in yellow, that is very useful. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go on. Um, so I write, but how can a historical process end? There will always be new history, yes? And if there is new history, then political systems must necessarily change in the future. So I'm asking somewhat Socratic questions. You are correct, uh, chat PDF says, there will always be new events and developments in the future and therefore history will continue. However, Fukuyama argues that the blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what does Humato say? As you suggest, there will always be new events and changes in, future, in the future and therefore new history will be made. Fukuyama acknowledges this, but he argues that the larger process of evolution of human consciousness, yeah, it's continuing to return back to this notion of human consciousness and the development of ideologies, which is different than the left, which is focusing more on this idea of liberal democracy. Okay, minor differences. Let's keep going. So I, I push it again. I say, but what is the proof that he offers to the reader to prove that Western liberal democracy is the final form of human government? The answer is on the left. Fukuyama argues that the proof of liberal democracy status as the final form of human government lies in its ability to satisfy basic human needs and desires such as freedom, equality, and prosperity. Okay, well, that's interesting. And then he go, it goes on. And Humata says, Fukuyama argues that the proof that Western liberal democracy is the final form of human government lies in the fact that it has emerged as the dominant form of government in the world. Yeah, same, same, uh, same, same question. Um, and then I ask, but it is easy to show that freedom, equality, and prosperity are not universal values since other societies have flourished without them in the past history. How would he respond? So again, I'm asking it quite uh, provocative, I think, or if you will, Socratic type questions. Fukuyama would likely respond by arguing that while there have been societies in the past that have flourished, 
these societies were not able to provide the same level of free blah blah. So that's I think it's dodged the question that really doesn't help me. Let's see what it's what Humata says. Fukuyama would likely respond by arguing that while freedom, equality, and prosperity may not have been universal values, they have emerged as universal values in the modern era. I, should, I think I actually like that answer better. Anyways, okay, it goes on. Okay, I can see that it's controversial, but it almost seems like he's making a rhetorical statement. So I'm being very, very um, uh, picky here. <laughs> um, is this rhetorical? Or does Fukuyama really think there will be no other political order or imagination in the future? So I'm saying, is it rhetorical? Which is, I think, is a is a nuanced question, right? That I'm asking a, if you will, a large language model. And it writes, I thought this is an interesting question, a very interesting answer. Fukuyama's argument that liberal democracy represents the final form of human government is not meant to be taken literally. So that's interesting. I think that's an interesting interpretation of the article, right? Rather, he's making a rhetorical statement to emphasize the idea that liberal democracy has become so dominant and widespread that it represents a kind of endpoint or culmination of human political development. So I have to pause here and ask, now, is it understanding Fukuyama's article as a rhetorical statement because it's looked at other things in the in its uh you know uh, pre-training or is it getting that by, by only looking at this pdf i think it's a little of both it must be because i think that's a very nuanced statement that i don't know if it's getting it just simply from that but maybe it's getting it from my exchange but because i've used i've I've queried it, I've prompted with the word metaphor. I'm saying, I'm saying, is this metaphoric? And of course, it's a large language model. It's it's building on all of the language, you know, the, the, the all of the data that it's been exposed to. Okay, sorry about that. I had a bit of a pause there. Um, so here, so I continue to go on and I say, um, I can see that it's controversial, blah, blah, blah. And then here, Humacha says, Fukuyama's argument can be seen as both rhetorical and sincere. It's an interesting word, this word sincere. Um, on the one hand, he's making a provocative statement that's designed to capture the attention of his readers and stimulate debate. On the other hand, he genuinely believes that liberal democracy and capitalism have emerged as the final form of human government and economic organization. And that there are that there will be no more fundamental changes in the ways. I think that's actually much more accurate. I think actually that's a more accurate answer than um, chat PDF on the left. I mean, this is not a bad answer. This is a very good answer, uh, saying you know we shouldn't take it literally. Uh, but I think this gives us a bit more. Um, you know, I think it gives us a bit more context and uh, the 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 thrust of his argument, and it also tells us where. Um, this answer is derived from page 3, 10, 11, 14, uh, 12, 14, and 15. So I think that's very strong. Um, and then also here, okay, in this answer on the left, chat PDF tells me, oh, well, Fukuyama has actually revised his issues over time. So it's interesting. The PDF, the chat PDF is supposed to keep us in the lane, right? It's supposed to keep us in the article. But in my constant prompting it in asking these provocative questions, I think it has said, well, okay, <laughs> wait a second. You're, you're, you're a very uh, curious fellow. So I have to tell you that <laughs> I know that he's also changed his opinion. So it is now looking outside of the PDF, right? Um, so then that, of course, prompts me to say, okay, well, then how has he revised his view, right? And it says, um, it's interesting here, it says, in the year since he first published his famous essay, he's revised his views on the relationship between history, blah, blah, blah. He says now it's maybe his original argument was too simplistic. And then they, uh, it goes on to quote um, his newer book, The End of History and the Last Man, uh, so on and so forth. And what does Humata say? It also says, you know, they he's changed his view since his original essay. Uh, in, in 1989. So again, it's I think Kumata is more scholarly because it's um, sorry, it keeps going. It's more scholarly in the sense that it um, it's always citing. In subsequent writings, he's knowledge that his original argument was too simplistic, 
Uh, and then it says, and look at his new book, The Origins of Political Order, which is correct. It is written in 2011. He argues that the development of political institutions is, is an ongoing process shaped by a variety of factors, including culture, geography, and historical contingency. That's very boilerplate. Yes, but it's true that he suggests that liberal democracy, uh, that while the liberal democracy capitalism may be the dominant forms of government, uh, they may you know, they may not be in the future. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so, um, and then I hear, so here I say, you know, it sounds like he's not only revising his argument, but in fact, he's arguing against his original thesis. So I'm trying to I'd be a provocative reader, right? And so I thought um, this art, this answer, yeah, it's okay. I think it, it is trying to defend it. Um, and um, it's not a bad answer. What does Humata say? It's true that in this document, Fuku, Fukuyama appears to be arguing against his original thesis. He acknowledges that it's a bit it's simplistic, blah, blah, blah. He also, it, then, then, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, then I continue to go on. I won't go on, but I think, I think here, so I'll unshare the screen. So I think, you know, when you compare the two, I do think that uh, they're both e extremely useful. They both allow you, in a sense, to ask questions of the text, right? Um, and the questions or the answers it provides to you are very contextualized within the document. There's this moment when it starts looking outside as well, because I think it senses that I'm asking these, if you will, very leading questions. Um, I'm trying to ask it very contextual questions and very synthetic questions. And I think my questions are trying to build on previous questions, right? And I don't really, in a sense, I don't let it off the hook. I keep pressing it. And I think both programs, Chat PDF and Humata, do a good job in the sense of being an interlocutor, right? It, it is actually a good conversationalist. I think the Chat PDF is more maybe the level of writing is a bit lower maybe or more uh, public facing and humata perhaps is writing the way that it's coded um, it's asking chat pdf to provide perhaps a more scholarly voice um so i think they're both of value right and um and in this sense i think when i'm challenging the text when i keep or i'm challenging chat pdf or i'm challenging humata um I think what is really valuable, and I think we should pause for a moment here and, and admit um, that this is a very natural language way um, of interacting with the text, right? It's not about reading a linear uh, text and following, if you will, the narrative of the author, but rather, you know, I'm having a conversation with it, right? I'm not, I'm not reading the way I'm not reading the document as the way the author has written it, but rather I'm following my own narrative, right? So I think that's, that is interesting. And I think that is a, a different way of learning than reading an article, chatting with an article, um, following my own narrative, right? Um, or if you will, following my own understanding or, or posing my, my questions that reveals things that I don't understand allows the, if you will, the program to then extract that information and present it as if it were a reply to my question, right? So is that valuable? Yes, <laughs> that's very valuable. Um, that's very useful and it's very, if you will, eye-opening and it makes me think. And if I was a student, uh, undergrad or grad student, or if I was a researcher, I think that's valuable. I think it's a, it's a very different way of interacting with a article or in this case, a PDF. Um, and um, I can absolutely see, um, you know, it being a valuable tool for teaching and learning. Absolutely. Okay, so I, I hope you enjoyed that. I don't know, okay. I don't know how you would in, in, integrate that into teaching and learning that I think is the $64,000 question. Um, uh, but you know, it, this is an ongoing, you know, grand experiment. So we'll, we'll find out later, I guess, as we try to integrate these types of tools um, into the academy, into the classroom, uh, into our teaching and learning. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.